conventional rap is Madonna sings, you bet. Mm. Dances, terrific. Puts on a show that'll knock your socks off. Cook some mean spaghetti. Some hellacious <laughs> spaghetti. <laughs> Acting, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, I don't blame them for thinking that. They haven't seen me in very many good movies. Um, I don't disagree with them. But there's a difference between being in bad movies and being a bad actress. I don't think I'm a bad actress. I think I've been in a lot of bad movies. It certainly puts pressure on your next adventure. Yeah, it does. A lot. Mm hmm And you're, you're taking a swipe at a pretty big project. Well, the good thing about Evita is that it is, a, it is a musical, so people will be more accepting of me in that role because so much of it is about music. Describe Evita for me. Eva Peron, describe her. You mean psychoanalyze? Yeah, what Eva kind of woman Peron. is she? Desperate, um, misunderstood, generous. She had a drive about her? Yes. She was a little hurt by life? Hugely hurt. Yeah. Any of this sound familiar at all to you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, of course. You know, it, it just struck me, you know, when I was describing Ava Perón, mm. and I said she was hurt by life? Yes. I, I watched how you reacted to that. Um, yes, Dr. Sawyer. <laughs> how did I react? Well, you sort of mm, took it in a bit. Well, yeah, of course. I mean, believe me, I've done extensive research about her, and... and well, well, actually, I'm thinking of you. Okay. And I, why do you feel hurt by life? Why am I so hurt? I think, you know, losing my mother at a very young age was a devastating experience. And I really did feel completely abandoned at that point in my life. And I'm sure that that has been, that has influenced every decision that I've made. And um, sort of left me with a, with a feeling, a hunger, a, a, a longing, a, a feeling of emptiness. You sort of grow up being afraid to love things because they're going to leave you. And maybe that's why um, uh, I overreact to things, I'm oversensitive to things, um, because a lot of times I think, do you, are your, both of your parents still alive? Yeah. Do you, are you close to them? I am. Yeah. Isn't it great to be able to call them up? And I don't know, do you, I don't know if you call your mother all the time, but it's so, I... I call my mother all the time. Yeah, well, I am constantly, uh, you know, in, in, in these situations where I'm completely frustrated and absolutely no one can come to my rescue and make me feel better. And I always say, God, I wish I had a mother that I could call. And, um, I don't. What do you do with that? You just, you're by yourself. Um, yes. Can you reach out to anybody? Well, yeah, I mean, I have, I have incredible friends. Um, is there any place at all? Because this is important. This is, it is. for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Is there any place at all where you can go to feel safe? safe. This is such a good question. Um, and I think I should just cancel my shrink appointment. Um, <laughs> is there any place I can go that's safe? <clears throat> no, not really. I, I suppose. Uh, hmm. Well, that's not true. I have a sister who's married, and she has a son, and they live in Los Angeles. And she's the closest thing. She is the personality of my mother. And she, when I really want to, like, when I'm desperate, I run to her house. And because she has the, um, to me, the, the warmth of a family and, and a real nurturing environment around her. And she's not connected to the business. And so I can go, go to her house and lay on the couch and 
watch stupid movies with her son and, and you know, dinosaur movies and, and really, in a, in a way, feel safe and away from everything. If you look back over your life, is there one true love that stands out? Absolutely. Sean. Nobody comes close? No. Could anybody come close? Why not? I don't know. Sometimes people close down. Sometimes no, people I'm absolutely their, not you know. closed down. No. I'm an incurable romantic. This does raise the question of meeting men. Uh -huh. uh, is that a problem? Men being the way they are. It's not a problem meeting them. It's a problem meeting one of them is, a, you know, someone who's not an ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there are certain stereotypes that people are going to have to wait over. In I terms mean, of me? Yeah. I know. That's what I mean, they think they walk in the apartment and there's going to be a whip collection on the wall. Yes. A couple of cages. <laughs> that sort of lots thing. Lots of burning candles. So they have to get past that. Yeah, they do. And if they can't, then, then that's their problem. Because I'm so much more than that. I'm not even that. When I meet people and I get to know them, they always say, God, you're so sweet. You're so vulnerable. You know, and, and, and my whole thing is, God, can't you see that? Can't you see that in everything that I do? I mean, it's, I think it's obvious. If things went the way you really wanted them, would you marry again? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Family? Definitely. Bambinos? Absolutely. What if you don't meet the right guy? Well, then I'll adopt a baby. Or two. But I'm sure I'll meet the right guy. I'm sure of it. Do you feel this uh, notorious biological clock? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah? Well, what time is it then? It's time. <laughs> <laughs> you mean um, pretty much now? Yeah, but now I have to do this movie. And then after the movie? After the movie, I'm going to put a couple of ads in the New York Times, Village Voice, who knows who's going to apply for, you know, the fatherhood gig. Somewhere in that mix, your music keeps going? Of course. Always. Some people wonder if, you know, at a certain point when it's not as hot or as commercially successful as it is now, and it happens to everybody. Mm hmm Has happened to me. Does that cause you to want to back off, to bail out? No. No. Nope. I love music. Okay? Okay. And by the way, um, if you're thinking of applying for that fatherhood gig, Primetime will not be screening the applicants, right, Madonna, directly. <laughs>